So hi there students, welcome back to another video lesson. So after uh, discussing different topics on measurement, so we are now down to our last topic. So which is the measurement of temperature. So let's start. So for our lesson objectives, we will be defining temperature. And of course, we will be converting units of temperature, Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Kelvin. And of course, we will be solving word problems involving conversion of units of temperature. So let us now have measurement of temperature. So pag sinabi natin temperature, this is the measurement of the degree of hotness or coldness of an object or a substance. So, measure ng temperature kung gano ka init or gano kalamig ang isang bagay sa isang lugar. So, halimbawa, sa isang room. So, uh, measure kung gano ka init, kung gano ka lamig doon, kung pwede bang magstay or hindi. And then halimbawa, pag nagpapakulo tayo ng tubig. So, usually, kapag nagpapakulo tayo ng tubig, so tinitingnan natin doon is kung gano ka init yung tubig. And then, uh, the basic unit of temperature under metric system is degree Celsius. So, kadalasan natin narinig yung degree Celsius na yan sa weather. Okay, and then, ano pa? Yung pagkinukuha ng tayo ng body temperature kung tinitignan kung may lagnat ba tayo or wala. And then, uh, for English system naman, we use Fahrenheit. So, degree Fahrenheit. So, kadalasan natin narinig ang degree Fahrenheit sa mga nagbe-bake. Okay, so kapag uh, may binibake sila sa oven, sa microwave oven, usually degree Fahrenheit ang ginagamit na units. And then, yung Kelvin naman, yun yung 4SI units. So, how do we measure temperature? So, paano natin sinusukat, inaalam kung gano'ng kainit ang isang lugar, gano'ng kalamig ang isang bagay. So, we use an instrument which is the thermometer. So, anong itsura ng thermometer? I hope familiar kayo sa instrument na to. Ayan. So, may maliit lamang siya na bagay. So, para siyang uh, ball pen. Okay? Kung titignan mo siya. So, ayan. Yan ang ginagamit ng mga nurse sa mga pasyente para malaman kung gaano kainit ang katawan mo bilang pasyente kung may lagnat ka ba o wala. So, yan po ang thermometer. So, take note, our normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So, kapag naging 38, 39, 40, lalo na yung 40, delikado na yan. So, yung parang nangungwarenta ka na, so, may lagnat na po tayo nun. And then, kapag uh, less than 37 degrees tayo, so, malamig po ang ating katawan. And then, syempre, pag naging zero, so, alam na po natin kung anong meron doon. And then, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So, kung matatandaan nyo, kapag nagpapakulo tayo ng tubig, so, kapag tumunog na yung takure, nag-ingay na siya. So, na-reach na ng water yung boiling point niya. So, dahil sa time napapatay na natin, of course, kasi yung tubig, lumalabas na doon sa takure. Na-reach na po kasi niya yung 100 degrees Celsius na boiling point. And then, of course, yung kabaligtaran ng boiling point is, of course, freezing point. And that is 0 degrees Celsius. Yan naman yung malamig. Okay. So, walang kainit-init yung tubig kasi 0 degrees Celsius ang kanyang temperature. So, here are the conversion factors if you want to convert one unit to another unit. So, the first one, to convert degree Celsius to Fahrenheit, just simply use of the formula degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 times the given uh, temperature in terms of degree Celsius plus 32. So, isubstitute lang na po natin yung given temperature na naka degree Celsius of course. And then we perform the operation. And then, from Fahrenheit to Celsius naman, 5 over 9 times the difference between uh, the given temperature in terms of degree Fahrenheit and 32. So, ganun pa rin. 
So, subtract lang natin yung dalawa and then we multiply it by 5 over 9. And then, Celsius to Kelvin. So, yung given temperature natin in terms of degree Celsius, mag-add lang po tayo ng 273.15. So, additional na lang din. Kapag naman kinoconvert natin yung uh, degree Fahrenheit to Kelvin, so, ang unang step muna po natin na gagawin is kailangan natin ma-convert yung degree Fahrenheit to Celsius and then Celsius to Kelvin. Okay? So, I hope naging clear sa inyo yung conversion factors. So, madali lang po kasi ang pag-apply ng formula. So, let's start. So, let us have example number 1. Convert 72 degree Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So, if we would like to convert uh, degree Celsius to degree Fahrenheit, just make use of the formula. So, yung formula po is degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 times degree Celsius plus 32. Yan lang po. So, yan lang po yung formula na gagamitin natin. So, again, sulat natin siya. Degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 times degree Celsius plus 32. Now, let us substitute the given temperature degree Celsius, and that is 72 degree Celsius. So, substitute lang po natin 72 plus 32. Next, multiply 9 and 72. So, 9 times 72, that is 648. And then, over 5. So, yung denominator po ng 72 is 1. So, we don't need to write 1. Okay, and then, plus 32. Next. So, i-divide lang natin yung 648 sa 5. So, kapag tinivide natin yung 648 sa 5, ang makukuha nating sagot is 129.6. And then, plus 32. So, i-add lang natin ngayon ang 129.6 tsaka 32. Okay? So, 129.6 plus 32, that is 161.6. So, ibig sabihin, our final answer will be 161.6 degree Fahrenheit. So, ito po yung equivalent ng 72 degree Celsius in degree Fahrenheit. So, let's have example number 2. Convert 140 degrees Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. So, yung formula po, in order to convert degrees Fahrenheit to degree Celsius, degree Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times degree Fahrenheit minus 32. So, in degree Fahrenheit, yung given temperature po. So, let's substitute 5 over 9 times yung given na uh, temperature is 140 minus 32. Then 5 over 9 times the difference of 140 and 32 is 108. Okay. So, pwede po tayo ditong mag-cancel out. So, kasi yung 9 tsaka 108, meron po silang uh, greatest common factor which is 9. So, if we divide 9 by 9, so magiging 1 lang siya. And then, kapag dinibide naman natin ang 108 sa 9, that is 12. So, and then, imumultiply lang natin yung mga natira. So, degree Celsius is equal to the product of 5 and 12 is 60. So, our final answer, 140 degrees Fahrenheit is equivalent to 60 degrees Celsius. Next, example number 3. Convert 200 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So, madali lang po ang pag-convert ng degree Celsius to Kelvin. It's because, ganito lang po ang gagawin. Yung given measure, uh, temperature in terms of degree Celsius, 
mag-add lang po tayo ng 273.15. Tapos, yun na po. So, substitute lang natin yung 200. Tapos, i-add natin yung 273.15. So, our final answer will be 473.15. So, susulat natin yung sagot natin as 473.15 Kelvin. So, wala po siyang degrees. Okay, kasi absolute po siya. Let's have the next example. Convert 126 degrees Fahrenheit to Kelvin. So, ito yung sabi ko kanina, kapag i-convert natin yung degree Fahrenheit to Kelvin, kailangan muna nating i-convert yung degrees Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. Saka pa lang natin mako-convert into Kelvin. So, yun muna ang gagawin natin. So, yung formula in order to convert uh, degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, 5 over 9 times degree Fahrenheit minus 32. Next, substitute natin yung degree Fahrenheit, yung temperature na given, 126 minus 32. Next, 5 over 9. So, 126 minus 32, that is 94. And then, i-multiply natin yung 5 sa 94, that is 470 over 9. So, kapag dinibide natin ang 473 sa 9, equal po siya sa 52.5. 22 degrees Celsius. So, ayan. Na-convert na po natin yung 126 degrees Fahrenheit sa degree Celsius, which is 52.22 degrees Celsius. And then, i-convert naman natin ngayon yung 52.22 deg degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So, madali lang naman po yun. K is equal to degree Celsius plus 273.15. Okay. So, substitute lang natin nakuha natin kanina na 52.22. Plus 273.15. So, add lang po natin yan. So, ang ating final answer, 325.15. 0.37 So, sulat lang natin dito para mas malinaw 325.37 Kelvin So, ayan Tatandaan, pag nagko-convert tayo ng degree, degrees Fahrenheit to Kelvin Convert muna sa Celsius and then from Celsius to Kelvin So, I hope naging clear po yung ating solution for example number 5, convert 500 Kelvin to degree Celsius. So, ayan, madali lang din naman po yung process sa pag-convert ng uh, Kelvin temperature to degree Celsius. Ayan. So, ang gagawin lang natin, sulat natin yung formula kung paano i-convert yung degree Celsius to Kelvin. So, that is K is equal to degree Celsius plus 273.15 Okay, so since kino-convert natin yung Kelvin to Celsius, ang gagawin lang po natin yung 273.15 kailangan po natin tanggalin dito sa right side. Kailangan natin idala sa left side. So magiging ganito po siya. K minus 273.15 equals degree Celsius na pwede rin naman nating isulat as degree Celsius is equal to K minus 273.15. Yan, pwede na po nating isubstitute yung ating given. So, degree Celsius is equal to 500 minus 273.15. 
So, isubtract lang po natin yan. Degree Celsius is equal to the difference of 500 and 273.15 is 226.85 So, our final answer, sulat lang natin, 226.85 degrees Celsius. So, reminder lang po, kapag measurement po kasi ang ating pinag-uusapan, mahalaga po na naka-attach po sa final answer po natin yung units. So, kung ano man siya, kung meters man siya, inches, yard, square meters, kung cubic feet, kung ano man yung units. Kasi kahit na tama po yung sagot, yung mismong number, wala naman pong units, hindi rin po yun i-accept. So, let's have example number 6. Dako naman tayo sa mga problems. So, which temperature is hottest? So, tinatanong, alin sa dalawang given na temperature ang mas mainit? So, paano natin malalaman alin ang mas mainit dyan? E, magkaiba nga yung units. So, ang gagawin lang po natin dito, i-convert natin yung 93 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. So, usually kasi kapag init, weather ang pinag-uusapan natin, degree Celsius ang ating ginagamit. Okay? So, kailangan natin i-convert ang 93 degrees Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. So, anong formula? Simple lang. Degree Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times the difference of degree Fahrenheit and 32. So, 5 over 9 times the given temperature which is 93 minus 32. 5 over 9 times, so 93 minus 32, that is 61. Next. 5 times 61, that is 305 over 9. So, kapag i-divide natin ang 305 sa 9, equal siya sa 33.89. O yan. So, kung i-convert natin siya, ay i-round up natin siya, 34 degrees Celsius. As you can see, 34 degrees Celsius ang ating nakuha. Okay, or 33.89. And then, yung letter A is 39 degrees Celsius. So, to answer the question, which temperature is hottest? So, our answer, letter A, 39 degrees Celsius. What, what if ang tinanong, which temperature is coldest? So, our answer is letter B. Kasi, mas mababa ang 34 degrees Celsius kesa sa 39 degrees Celsius. Next example, number 7. The required temperature in baking a cake is at 200 degrees Celsius. Express this temperature in degree Fahrenheit. So, kapag nagbe-bake tayo ng cake, usually naka-express yung temperature in terms of degree Fahrenheit or degrees Fahrenheit. So, based dito sa problem, given in terms of degree Celsius, na kailangan natin i-convert in terms of degrees Fahrenheit. So, in order to convert 200 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit, we use the formula degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 times degree Celsius plus 32. So, let us substitute 9 over 5 times the given temperature that is 200 plus 32. Next, yung 200 tsaka 5, meron po silang common factor. So, yung GCF nila is 5. So, kapag dinivide natin yung 5 sa 5, it will become 1. And then, yung 200 naman, dinivide natin sa 5. That is equal to 40. Now, yung natira, 9 and 
i-multiply lang po natin yan. So, 9 times 40 and then plus 32. Next, the product of 9 and 40 is 360 plus 32. So, degree Fahrenheit is equal to 360 plus 32, 392. So, our final answer, 392 degrees Fahrenheit. So, ayan. Yan po yung equivalent ng 200 degrees Celsius in degrees Fahrenheit. Next problem. The temperature of a brewed coffee decreased from 64 degrees Celsius to 59 degrees Celsius few minutes after it was poured in a cup. By how many degrees Fahrenheit did the coffee cool? So, yung temperature ng kape, nung bago siya isalin, is 64 degrees Celsius. Makalipas ang ilang oras, siyempre lalamig yun. So, naging 59 degrees Celsius. So, obviously, Kung tinatanong tayo dito, how many degrees Celsius, by how many degrees Celsius, madali lang, 64 minus 59, and that is 5 degrees Celsius. But, ang tinatanong sa atin is, how many degrees Fahrenheit? So, ano yung solusyon natin dito? First, we will convert 64 degrees Celsius and 59 degrees Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So, degrees Fahrenheit. So, para malaman natin. Kasi yun ang nire-require sa atin in terms of degrees Fahrenheit. And then, we subtract the results. Yun, after natin makonvert yung 64 degrees Celsius at 59 degrees Celsius into degrees Fahrenheit, isusubtract lang po natin yung mga sagot. So, ayan. Unahin muna natin yung 64 degrees Celsius. So, 64 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So, in formula, 9 over 5 times degrees Celsius plus 32. Substitute lang natin, 9 over 5 times 64 plus 32. And then, we multiply 9 and 64 that is 576 over 5 plus 32. Next, divide 576 by 5. That is 115.2 plus 32. So our final answer, degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 115.2 plus 32, that is 147.2. So, sulat lang natin as 147.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, yung second naman, 59 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So, same formula lang din po ang gagamitin natin. So, 9 over 5 degrees times degrees Celsius plus 32. Then substitute 59. Ayan. Then multiply. So 9 times 59 that is 531 over 5 plus 32. Next. 531 divided by 5 that is 106.2 plus 32. Ayan. So, add lang po natin. So, 106.2 plus 32, that is 138.2. So, pwede natin isulat as 138.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So, to answer the question, how, by how many degrees Fahrenheit did the coffee cool? So, Subtract lang po natin 147.2 degrees Fahrenheit minus 138.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So, kapag sinubtract po natin yan, our final answer will be 9 degrees 
Fahrenheit. So, ayan po. Yan po yung ating final answer. So, natapos na po yung ating discussion on measurements. So, six topics po yun, starting from measurement of length, measurement of mass and weight, measurement of volume, measurement of time, measurement of angle, and then itong measurement of temperature. So, our next topic, so pupunta na po tayo dun sa isa pang branch ng mathematics, which is algebra. So, bago tayo magpunta dun, we will be translating verbal phrases into mathematical phrases and vice versa. So, verbal phrases, ito yung mga words. Okay? And then, mathematical phrases, so gumagamit po tayo dito ng numbers and letters o yung tinatawag na variables in algebra. So, I hope naging clear po yung ating discussion on topics of measurement. So, yun lang. Maraming salamat.